the Houston Astros are cheaters. Is that breaking news? Not for anyone who's been in the industry. After 18 years in Major League Baseball, I can tell you that there is something that all teams try to do, and some teams do it better than others. You might be thinking, oh, that must be signing free agents or trading players and getting the better of a trade. I'm talking about stealing signs. And any possible advantage that you can get, you're going to try to get. So let me set the stage for you as to what happened today and why this is such a big topic of conversation for reasons that are unbeknownst to me but are about to be known to you. The Athletic reported today with Ken Rosenthal and Evan Drellick that the Astros in 2017 were using sophisticated video equipment to steal signs. Well, here's what was happening. They had a camera in center field. They were pointing the camera toward the catcher, catching, putting down signs, then that image was on a screen right near the dugout in Minute Maid Park. So the players would get to know what pitch is coming, and then you have to communicate that pitch to the batter. How do you possibly communicate without an earpiece from the dugout to a batter? Well, you have to do it with noises. So the Astros are being accused of actually banging a garbage can in and around the dugout every time there's going to be an off-speed pitch. That's what sign stealing really is. You try to do two things. You're, elite, you're either trying to steal location or pitch type. Some players don't want to know what's coming. Very few. Most do want to know. But what pitchers and players also want to be very cognizant of is location, which is why when you're watching a baseball game, the catcher, you'll notice, is always looking up. He's looking up at the hitter. He's looking up to make sure the hitter is not watching him where he's setting up. Then the catcher will give his sign, and very often we will teach our catchers, and sometimes they can do it, that you set up one place so the batter can feel where the catcher is, but then you've got the catcher move as the pitch is being thrown. That throws the hitter off. But in terms of stealing signs, you're really stealing what kind of pitch it's going to be. So why is it this is such a big story today? And the answer is, like every good conspiracy theory, it finally involves a source that's not anonymous. They finally got players to talk. And one of the players who spoke is a pitcher named Mike Fears. Mike Fears is a pitcher who pitched for the Astros and was not offered a free agent contract once he became a free agent after the 17 season. So does he have an ax to grind with the Astros? Probably not. He had a good season on the athletics. Is there a reason he would talk now? I think someone just finally asked him the question, and he decided it was time to answer. And what his answer was, so let's say the Athletic, they're asking around all these Astro players. They finally find fires, and they find him, and they ask him, were you doing anything with sign stealing in 2017? Because, you know, the Boston Red Sox were, and they actually got in trouble by Major League Baseball. And he then started talking. And when you're trying to get a source to speak and on the record, you just keep going. And fires did keep going. And basically what he said is Houston will do anything it can to get an unfair advantage. That's not a surprise. That's not a major epiphany. I spent 18 years trying to get a major advantage. Why does it matter that we're trying to steal signs? Of course we're trying to steal signs. Well, MLB didn't want anything of it because every team was complaining to MLB about their signs being stolen, to which my answer always was, then do a better job. Get more complicated signs. So now that's happened. Where When you're watching games, how often do you see the catcher touch his arm, then his shin, then his knee, then he goes to his nose, and then he puts fingers down. They have nail polish on. Sometimes you'll notice a catcher gets crossed up because the catcher doesn't know what sign he gave. The pitcher can't remember what the indicator was. And what I mean by that is pitchers look for an indicator, and it's the first sign after the indicator. So a complicated sign would be the following. Four, two, one, two, three, four. And what the pitcher has to remember is after the second two, that's what you're pitching. So four, two, one, four, two, one, four. They have to remember the sign was one. That's a fastball. I could barely remember it. It's like playing Simon. I could never remember red, orange, then yellow, then green. I'd make it like to five, and then ADD would kick in. That's what's happening during a ball game. 
So the catcher thinks it's going to be a breaking ball. The pitcher throws a fastball, and there ends up being a cross-up. That's why in baseball there's so many more cross-ups than there used to be. So what can we do about that? Well, the Marlins in 2003, we had a plan. We had a player who to this day is, I, I love him. His name is Luis Castillo. He was our starting second baseman. He never knew what city he was in. We just He knew he had to be at a ballpark to play the game at 7 o'clock every night, and he came to play every single day. When he'd have a bad game, he'd be despondent. He was just, he was the glue to our World Series championship team. But he could never remember the complicated signs. You've seen managers touch their nose, their ears, their nose, their chin. Third base coachmen, they're touching their shoulders, their sides, their hat. Well, our signs for Luis Castillo, just a little side note for everyone watching and listening. When he was on first base and we needed him to do the run part of a hit and run, here's how we gave Luis Castillo the sign. Run. That's what the first base coach did. That was the sign. We just told him, run. When it was time to bunt, and the thir- when he was hitting, and the third base coach would go through a bunch of signs, he wouldn't do that with Luis. He would go in, and he would yell, bunt. And he was so good that it didn't matter that the other team know- knew what was coming. So all of that's going on now with sign stealing is a question of competitiveness. It's a question of, is there an unfair edge? My argument is the Astros do not have an unfair edge because every team is either doing it or trying to do it. MLB is now stepping in, and before the 2019 season, they came up with a new set of rules that talked about cameras in center field that talked specifically about sign stealing. And now they're investigating the Astros. After the Brendan Taubman incident, remember the assistant general manager? We've talked about it before on this show. He was fired. He's now being interviewed by MLB. Not for a job, I assure you. Simply to get information. This is according to The Athletic, and it is absolutely true. MLB, the investigative unit, they have an entire unit now. It's called the Department of Investigations, the DOI. They will interview Brendan Taubman, and they're trying to ascertain two things. One, what were the Astros doing? And then most importantly, two, who knew about it? Now that's the rub. MLB is far more interested in owner and team president involvement than it is in actually whether signs are being stolen and then conveyed to the hitter. That is a big story in the ownership ranks all the time. What are owners actually involved in? Because plausible deniability is something that we always wanted our owner to have. There are things that happen all the time that we would not want to talk to our owner about. Because if he's ever asked by the commissioner, we wanted him to have plausible deniability where he'd look at the commissioner and say, I had no idea this was going on. I never wanted plausible deniability because I knew that I was eventually going to be the buck stops with me, so I had to know what was going on. So there's signs being stolen. I know about it. In the Astros organization, you think Jeff Lunau has no idea that there's an intricate camera being in place? Well, do you know how cameras get to center field? They get purchased. Do you know how a camera gets purchased? Through a capital expenditure request. Do you know who approves capital expenditure requests? Yes, Jeff Lunau and the front office of the Houston Astros. Don't let them tell you that it's the underlings who approve those requests, that they just get a big pile of money from the ATM and go buy whatever they want. Do you think the screen that ends up in the dugout showing the picture from the center field camera just materializes? Do you think they have an account on Amazon and it just arrives? There's an entire process. It's a business expense. So the deniability cannot go past the president because he or she will know about it. Now, owners don't often know about capital expenditures or specific requests that are made of speed guns or certain minor league equipment. They're watching games. They are fans for the most part. But people whose job it is to take advantage of a situation, they always know what's going on.